Death is not justice. Those words were heard at the opening of the 8th World Congress Against the Death Penalty, taking place this week in Berlin. Over 50 countries continue to practice capital punishment, including Iran, China, and the United States, which remains an outlier on the issue among its close allies. Well, joining us today to talk about this sensitive topic is photographer Scott Langley, who's been documenting the death penalty in the U.S. and advocating for its abolition for over 20 years. His photos are being shown at that Congress in Berlin, and he joins us by telephone after we had some video issues. Uh, good morning to you, Scott, and thank you so much uh, for taking the time to speak with us here on France 24. Uh, can you just start by telling us uh, what made you decide to dedicate your life and your career to this issue? Uh, well, first of all, thanks for having me. Um, it's a really powerful Congress that we're experiencing here in Berlin, and to see the photos on display is uh, incredibly a privilege for me. Uh, I began photographing the death penalty uh, over 20 years ago because I grew up in Texas. And for, for most of us who know Texas is kind of the, the center of executions, at least in the Western world. And I was really moved by some of my experiences as a young student, um, actually standing outside of a death house during an execution for a class project assignment in which I was taking photos. And it really struck me the absurdity of what it means when you can find yourself in a place where you can stand on a street corner knowing the exact time and the exact location that someone is going to be killed, and, and especially at the hands of the government, is especially, especially troubling. And your series, Timeline of an Execution, which I think we've been seeing uh, some photos of, uh, is particularly striking. It features black and white photos essentially documenting the execution process. Can you describe what you wanted the public to take away from that series? In prisons in the United States, uh, journalists aren't allowed recording devices, so you'll never see video or photos of actual executions. But occasionally the prison does allow limited access to prisons, to journalists, before executions happen to see the apparatus and the layout and for them to describe the process before it happens. And so I, I took the photos that are on exhibition here to, to give people an opportunity to see and kind of imagine what is happening because it's, it's you know, oft, often executions are carried out in the dark hours of the night in faraway places and we don't get to see it. The media doesn't necessarily also always report on what's happening with the specifics. And so it's my hope that the photos will expose the system so that we can see the, the bureaucracy of, of what the government and the prisons are doing to prisoners. And I think through those images, the, especially the stark black and white images, we can start to get a sense of, of the, the inhumanity that's built into the system. And two inmates were actually executed just last night in Texas and Arizona. Uh, one of them, Murray Hooper, was a 76-year-old African-American man who'd been on death row for 40 years. Uh, I'm curious if you've been following his or any of those other cases. I mean, the troubling thing is these cases are coming at us so fast, it's really hard to follow them closely. Um, as you said, there was two executions yesterday alone in the U.S., and there's two more scheduled today. There's one at 5 o'clock um, um, on our time here um, of Richard Fairchild, who's a military veteran and severely mentally ill. And today's actually his birthday, and the government is going to execute him on his birthday in Oklahoma. And then a few hours later, there's another execution scheduled in Alabama of a, a man who the jury actually recommended life in prison by a vote of 11 to 1. Yet yeah. the judge overrode that and gave him death. And so it's, it's hard to stay on top of the details of these cases, unfortunately, because even in the midst of all this, Texas set another execution date. So they just keep happening. Despite that, many in the U.S. do continue to support the death penalty. In fact, last month, the shooter who killed 17 people at Parkland High School was spared the death penalty and given life in prison. And that decision deeply upset many family members of the victims. What would you say to them? Um, well, I represent an organization that I started called Death Penalty Action, and the chair of our board is Sharon Risher, and she had a loved one murdered in a mass shooting, and she actually spoke about this and said that you know, she understands the pain of the families um, and wanting justice and, and, and revenge um, in these horrible crimes, but she also talks about the fact that you know, there, there will never be closure in this. No matter what we do to the perpetrators of awful crime, you know, the victims won't receive closure. And uh, you know, life in prison is a viable option that will keep society safe, and it's going to allow the, the families of the victims to move on in these horrible crimes. 
And as I said, the U.S. is a bit of an outlier uh, when it comes to the death penalty. What are the biggest obstacles, obstacles to, to abolishing it uh, in the United States? I think some of the obstacles are a lot of uh, politics uh, within our, our system, our electoral system. Um, you know, the Republicans tend to support the death penalty, not exclusively, um, but there is a lot of political uh, back and forth with that. Even within the, you know, the legal system with prosecutors and judges, there's a lot of politics around the death penalty, and it makes it hard for people to reverse decisions already happened that have already happened. You know, a, a judge is, is not likely to reverse the decision by another judge. And so it's a, it's a struggle on the legal front to find uh, relief for prisoners. Uh, but just on kind of on the ground where I'm more of a grassroots activist approach to this, we, you know, see that there is a lot of support, especially among religious people in the United States for the death penalty and trying to educate people uh, about why that death penalty is actually um, in conflict with religious views is, is an educational campaign that we have to work on. All right, Scott Langley, we're going to have to leave it there. Thank you again so much for joining us here on France 24 to talk.